How would it feel to have a thriving fitness business and have the freedom to enjoy life at the fullest? Well, that is exactly what the Trainer Revenue Multiplier Show is going to give you. My name is Matthew Park. This is Amy Filer. Hey, guys. And we are here to serve. Well, Jason, welcome to the TRM show. Jason Theobald is one of those guys in the world right now, guys, always been around the industry for many, many years. I lost count, man. Has it been, what, 27, 28 years? Maybe 30 now? <laughs> I mean, I've been active in it about since 18. So I don't know. What is that, 24 years? That that makes you, what, like 30-some? Or... <laughs> <laughs> makes me like 44, unfortunately. <laughs> He is the owner of Screw Prep Guides, eight amazing coaches. He is a father to two wonderful boys. He is a co-host of Ethics Cartel Show with Jeff Black and Jeffrey Sue. He is a co-owner of New FX Formulations, owner of Feed for Function, IPU Pro Athlete. I keep naming the list. Ashley is so freaking long, and I can't even keep up to you, by the way. He is a mentor to many, mentor more to the mentors in the industry as well, guys, and also is a special when it comes to contest prep, hormones, functional health, functional, all kinds of functional, like specialized advanced. So basically in your, in your health and fitness goals, guys, we all go to Jason Theobald as the guy, because he's kind of the mentor to the mentors in the industry. So Jason, awesome to have you, pal. I uh, appreciate to be here. That was quite an intro. So I appreciate it. Well, I lost count after about, after about 30 seconds. I was like, this list will get probably a page long, but I'll keep it kind of only a quarter up for you. Okay. <laughs> Good deal. Good deal. So Jason, man, I'll kind of keep this tight, man, because I know we're, our time office is yesterday. So with that being said, you've been around the industry for 24 years. You've got an amazing company, Scooby Prep, right now with eight coaches. I want to kind of go there first, um, if you don't mind, Jason, but actually uh, kind of obviously how you built that up, because obviously you were probably a one coach show for many, many yeah. years, right? Where you yeah. kind of got your, yeah. your team built. Kind of give us kind of a, a, a lay of, of that shift going from like one coach to like multiple coaches and what you yeah. did. Yeah. Um, well, I think it took me many years to go that route. Um, one was because, um, you know, I was a practicing lawyer. Um, I was a general house, general in-house counsel um, for a business that had, you know, about 50 million in assets. And so I would do that during the day. Uh, as of I was at work, I could, I could help clients if nothing was going on at work. Um, and then at night, I'd come home and work till, you know, 11, 11.30. So I did that for a lot of years building the business and I quit law in 2018. It might've been into 2017. It all kind of blurs together, but that's when I kind of went all in on coaching and my passion. Um, you know, I needed some years to see that it was just going to keep doing this and there was none of this and there never was, it was just that. So I was like, all right, it's ready to do, go. And then at that point I had more time to go to seminars and to study and to research. And that's when my knowledge base grew and then I felt like I was prepared to be able to bring a coach on and train them up to that point. If I didn't have a good enough knowledge base, like why would I be trying to bring someone else under? And we're both going to struggle on the same problems with clients. So I think in the industry today, people are growing super rapid and they're bringing coaches on, but they don't necessarily know how to educate them. So that's where the mentorships come in. Um, I can help educate other teams and other coaches um, because the industry is growing so fast, but there's a lot of knowledge that you need to really help clients who are beating their body up day in, day out training. Um, and there, you're going to see a lot of different stuff from Hashimoto's to PCOS to gut health issues. And if you don't have a handle on that, um, you're going to struggle and that client's going to leave because you're just not getting them results. So kind of break it down to you. So as far as I was concerned, so as far as like you mentioned Hashimoto's, you mentioned about even the functional health and so forth, what are things you typically coach these coaches on typically? Or, so or I, I, if I'm mentoring uh, or even my own coaches, um, obviously I try to, I try to pick coaches that already know macros. They already know how, you know, how to do cardio and, and rotate. I'll work on them if that's the case. But I don't want someone super green. I watch the industry and someone who maybe might do a little better um, as an entrepreneur instead of an entrepreneur. They still want that autonomy, but they, they need that that oversee. And so then I, I discuss with them. And so I jump right in a lot of times to more of the functional things they're going to see. So I have a 12 course thing that I that have set up and it's, you know, hypothalamic menorrhea, um, how to read, you know, cortisol curves, adrenal insufficiency, uh, PCOS. Hashimoto's and I go through all that on how we handle these 
types of cases so that they have the process because it's really about a system. Um, you, you know, I, I have a system of how I work through these cases and I pass that on to my coaches so that they're not just jumping around. Um, so that's kind of what the education looks like. Um, I probably will bring a coach on here soon. Um, haven't really have anyone in mind, but I think we're, we're ready for one more. So well, the one thing I know is also as well with you, man, is when you bring coaches on they're like, you have this like way of, of, of the community you've, you've built, the loyalty you build with people. It's so actually quite, it's quite inspiring what you actually do. So how do you keep your coaches? Like they're with you for years, man. Like they're absolutely, it's actually kind of phenomenal. What's your formula recipe you do with coaches to like, keep them, you know, full on with you, obviously as they're growing with you. Right. Well, um, I try to keep it fair where they can earn a really good living. Um, you know, there's some teams out there that take 40%. And, you know, if you're completely a noob coming on, I start there and then I work it down. As you build your book, I, I drop it. And so I normally take about 25% um, from my coaches. And there's a lot of, you know, different ways to do this out there. There's, you know, one of the ways it's growing is a flat fee. So they just give them, you know, a coach $125 per client or 150 Well, that's great when they're learning. But my fear there is that they're going to say, all right, I know you're selling that package for 400 and I'm getting a buck 50 and you're getting 250 doing nothing or I'm getting 125. So I think they have to feel well compensated and then supported and, you know, build somewhat of a culture um, that they can work within. And um, that's, yeah, I mean, they, they really seem to just kind of stick around and stay in that, in that form. So it's guess it's a little bit of support, not being greedy either on my end. Um, cause those people giving up 40, 45%, they're not going to stay forever. So you say you, you made the jump from being a lawyer to full-time coach about, about almost five years. Uh, I, yeah. Five years ago. Yeah. Is that when you kind of made the jump to kind of bring your first coach on? Uh, so I had one coach before that. Um, but that was it. Um, and like I said, he, he kind of filled a niche where he don't work with competitors, mostly men. So we didn't have to know a ton of the other the issues that we see that, that really plague women more than men. Uh, but, but that was the only one. Uh, and so I didn't really bring on and start developing the team until I had the time to do it. So the, the one that kind of came on first and from that one guy you built, obviously, you know, you kind of like probably grew pretty fast from there because now you had the focus from being a lawyer with skills from like probably the disciplines of being a lawyer now are putting into your training business. 100%. And I worked for an entrepreneur. I mean, he built all of his business from the ground. So I saw, I saw the things that he did, you know, um, and I was watching and not only was I getting paid, I was learning. Um, so yeah, I, I took the ability to be able to set up companies quick because of my, my lawyer background, but also the business acumen that, that he had kind of passed on to me and he had nothing to do with fitness, but you know, a lot of the still same principles hold. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of what allowed it to, to kind of then flourish. Gotcha. What, what is like one takeaway you probably would take from that experience of being a lawyer for so many years that you kind of took away from him that you passed on to your fitness business afterwards? Well, business wise, um, don't take on a partner and give them equity unless they have, money in the game or if you're going to do it that way you need to have sweat equity and then basically have tears for where okay now you do this you get here's five more percent you do this um, just bringing a partner in saying hey you get 30 percent uh didn't work out too well for us um and then also one thing he was a multi multi-millionaire but he took no money from his companies he had real estate and he, he used that but he reinvested every dime and so you know Many a year, especially with new ethics, we didn't take a dime. We just reinvested it and kept building the brand. Um, only recently to the last two years have I started getting dividend checks. And so it's been around five years. So I, I took that from him and now I'm starting an HRT clinic. And it's the same thing. I talked to my partners and said, look, I'm not trying to, to drain the account right away as we start making money. Let's, let's reinvest. Let's get this thing where we're going and then we can all pull from it. Um, so I'd learned those two things. Um, and then, you know, the rest of what I learned, he was a sales guy. And I definitely don't consider myself a sales guy, but I'm decent at building relationships. And he was good at that too. So I saw how important that is. Um, everybody loved Bob. Um, you know, he just, he didn't meet a stranger. And so, you know, 
I, I that kind of rubbed off on me that, okay, well, he's successful as hell. He uses his relationships to his advantage and everyone really likes him. So I took that over into business as well. Interesting. Interesting. So obviously now, now 24 years later from like this 24 year journey in fitness, because obviously you're also a pro athlete, you're an advanced coach, like you have multiple disciplines you've been going through in over two decades. Knowing all that now, what would you actually tell yourself 24 years ago, Jason, starting back, you know, back over again? Probably to not be as rigid. Um, probably to enjoy what I have in the moment. Um, probably make sure that you're, you're given enough time to your loved ones. Um, you know, I have been through a divorce and, you know, I know where I, I messed up and things like that. And I think that, uh, you know, you got to give proper time to people and I'm much better at that now, I think. Um, but everything was, you know, the business, my competing, all that was, you know, very kind of on the forefront. And so um, probably those lessons basically, but as far as business, like, you know, I think I traversed it as well as I could. Could I be doing better? Of course, but I'm pretty happy with where I am in terms of work-life balance and how much free time I do have and I can travel, but I still have a very robust business. So you know, I don't think there's anything there I would change because I don't really like to live through regrets, but I think it would just be realize what you have, um, be grateful and um, kind of water your own grass. Interesting. So, so I guess, where do you go from here as far as like scooter prep? Like, is it, are you going to keep growing it to where you, you know, add a coach and a coach, you know, a, a coach? Yeah, and so What's I would love to add a few more coaches. Um, but, you know, I always am looking for, good coaches, not just another number. So, and like I said, I, my formula generally is not bringing on a complete noob. They at least have to be in the fitness industry for a couple, you know, many years. And like I said, understand macros, understand the nutrition side. Um, but I do want to bring on some more coaches and then, you know, what that will allow me to do is take less athletes over time. And, you know, I'll have a little more free time for new ethics and I'll have a little more free time for this HRT clinic that I'm starting because it's been very difficult right now with my client load to kind of do all that. So as I keep building the team, um, that will allow me, I, I'm hoping a little more free time and to free up my time. So I'm well aware I need to get a couple more coaches in um, and I'll never stop coaching. Um, but, you know, as more revenue streams are built, I won't have to take the client load. I feel like I have to. Makes complete sense. Totally. Yeah. Also, one thing I also as well, man, is you're very routine to your process. Like even when I see your social media, I see what you're doing in the, uh, even with your current job right now is you're always routine. You're always consistent. You, know, you put in those core, core aspects. So like, what could you tell coaches out there? Always they're, they're in their second or third or fourth year. Like you've been doing this for 24 years. So obviously yeah. you've got a lot of knowledge here. What do you tell them? Because you're Mr. Routine over there, Jay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's how I thrive. Um, you know, I think you should get up at a, a regular time. Um, I get up, I walk for an hour and work while I'm walking. I have a desk on my treadmill and I start my day like that every day. It helps me stay stress-free and relaxed. Um, if I sleep in too long, then my day builds up and I'm just running upstream all day. So I think you need a process and whatever that process is for you, that's fine. I've known coaches who don't start work until 6 p.m. and they work till 3 a.m. and then they sleep till noon. If that works for you, great. Um, me, I've got to get up and I know that if I don't hit that email inbox and start working by the time three or four comes, it's going to be stress city. So I, every day you get up, you show up, even though you don't have a boss every day, get up, show up and have a routine. And so, you know, that's important. I think, you know, some coaches, I think, get into this and they're like, oh, you know, I got this job. I can, I can run errands all day and golf and do this. And I can just hit people up with the phone that doesn't work. It, this is a job. Um, and if you want to make good money doing it, it's a job. And it, you've got to, I mean, I worked Monday night till 8 30 because I had to get stuff out for my HRT clinic. We're building the website. I had to write copy. Um, you know, I was working until seven o'clock last night. I had uh, consult calls and stuff. So, and I've got one at 6 PM tonight. So, you know, my days are pretty long, but I do take time also to myself, um, you know, at midday um, I'll go to the gym. And that kind of breaks up my day and then I get right back to it. And some people struggle after they, they kind of break to get right back into it. And, and I'm pretty good about sitting right back down. 
Um, you got to stay disciplined. You got to apply the discipline that, that maybe got you to where you're at in terms of your physique into your coaching business. So. Interesting. So I guess, the, I guess the next question, how do you balance out when you compete with your business? Mm-hmm. Because obviously competing is a whole different, you know, ball game of, <laughs> of discipline. You man. Know, <laughs> it's really tough. I'm going to be honest with you. If I have any more preps in me right now with all I have going on in business and I'm okay with that. Um, you know, every, every, there's a season for everything and maybe the season's over. Um, but I'll still continue to stay in shape and train. That's just what I like. But, um, yeah, it's hard. Like when you're, when you're in prep, um, it's difficult because I have, you know, a lot of people relying on me, um, and you gotta be able to think quick and analyze and plan and map out. I mean, that's what you're doing all day. And when you're that tired towards the end, it's, it's a struggle. Um, so, um, usually it, I don't think my clients feel it. I hope they don't. Um, but, um, yeah, it's hard. And so I'm not sure there is any more preps in me. Well, here, so, so you being a veteran, obviously with even competing is concerned, like, what would you tell a coach that, you know, thinks that they have to compete three, four, five times a year to, you know, build their business because a lot of people just believe that. So, which maybe it's part of the truth. I want to kind of hear what your philosophy is and your wisdom is from that, Jason. Well, you know, when I started in the business, competing was important, very important. Um, you know, that's how you kind of got your, your dog tags or your credentials, you know? And so we, we would post on message boards and, you know, we'd post our progress and talk about what we're doing and then help others and, um, so I built my reputation that way, just giving out free answers and, you know, always posting pics and things like that. So for me, competing was very important mm-hmm. um, because my business early on was mostly competitors. OK, um, so guys would see me get better on stage um, and then they'd be like, man, what did you do from six months ago to this? Um, and so that was important to me. Um, I think that you can easily create a coaching business without having competed. Um, but I do still think that it helps if you can show you walk the walk, you're probably going to get at least some competitor clients. And now you're going to have before and afters, nice transformations, and you can post those and start building, you know, when you take on a functional medicine client, there might not be a ton of changes in the body for months. And I share them and let people know like what we're working through, but there's not that dramatic change because you're, you're working on the internal. So it's nice to have some of those before and afters and competing draws it like it's 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 big it's catchy you put a 12 week or 16 week transformation of yourself they're like okay this person knows you start with a lower price point and then you get people in and and produce again and and now you can start raising your prices and then you can advance out so i won't say you have to compete but i will tell you this it does help Interesting. Interesting. So kind of right off, right off our call today, guys, obviously Jason has to go here pretty soon, guys. So I'll kind of leave you one more question, man, is give, give the listeners, trainers out there, coach out there, obviously right now from all walks of life, you know, what's that one piece of advice that you want to give them as they're growing their business, they're advancing yep. their education. What's the advice you want to give them, Jay? So one thing that I've always done, I, I want the client to leave me in a better position than when they found me. And if you push value and you push and you care, the rest is going to take care of it because in this business, referrals are still, at least for me, the biggest way I get business. Uh, Instagram's nice. I don't even post on Facebook anymore, but I'm most times people say, oh, I spoke to this person. This person highly recommended you. I just got hired from a badass IFBB pro in France. And, uh, you know, one of the guys in the States that I prepped as an IFBB pro in the 212 was like, dude, you want to get with this guy? So that's all referrals. So take care of the people you have rather than always scrambling to get more and learn and diversify your education. And then, you know, it should all fall into place. That's great advice, Jason. So guys, if you want to follow this guy, you know where he is, Scooby Prep. What's your Instagram handle again there, Jay? Uh, Scooby Prep one underscore IFBBB. IFBB pro Scooby prep one underscore IFBB pro. And if you guys want some mentoring on advanced stuff, like what Jason talked about, guys reach out to Jason on Instagram, DM him. He's an mentoring, a mentor to the mentors when it comes to that kind of advanced coaching guys. So if you check Jason out guys, thank you, Jason, very much for your time, man. Welcome. Definitely. I was going to warm up with the process. It was kind of fun to kind of get the ball going today, but definitely for a future, we'll definitely have a part two to this Jay down the road. Okay. Sounds good to me. All right. All right. So guys, thanks, a lot. thanks Jay. All right. All right bye. Thank you.